Hey, uh, hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, well, whatever the time you are watching this, uh, thank you for coming back. And so far, there is no body, just me, it's a one man show, stand up comedian with no audience. There's nobody watching this, okay? So it's 2018, June 20. Six twenty-seven. I don't know what that date is. Who cares, right? And uh, you know, I it's for your entertainment. Um, it's like stand-up comedy, sit-down comedy, uh, one-man show. All right. It's it's. I just want to entertain you. That that's all this is. It's, it could be intellectual entertainment or comedy, whatever. Some uh, stupid Asian man. Uh, Who's, who's talking about things that uh, who's talking about things and he doesn't know what he's talking about kind of thing okay so yeah you know I, 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 I uh, I'm a performer so I sing and dance so I told you many times I'm running for president in 2020, right? That's part of the reason I'm doing this and um, uh, to demonstrate what I know, if I do, if you think I do, then you're a very generous person. And um, yeah, just even if you think I'm stupid, I still thank you for being here with me and what taking your time for me, uh, that means a lot to me, okay? So I, I thank you regardless whether you think I'm stupid, crazy, or whether you disagree with me, I still thank you because that means a lot to me. I mean, you taking time to watch this, okay? So, so let's start with a joke. It's something actually happened today, so I guess my life is a joke because it's so funny. The truth is the funniest thing in the world. So if you are strong enough to face the truth, handle the truth, then you can be a very humorous person. If you tell the truth, then you are funny. Because nothing is more funnier than the truth, the facts. So I told my parents that yeah, about several months ago that I'm running for president in 2020 and they say uh, it's either you're crazy or you're retarded that's what my parents told me okay it's either you're crazy or you're retarded so you know uh, I talked to my superiors at work and they they told me yeah I can take a week off vacation and you know visit my parents my grandmother in Korea and um, because they love me I love them and they want to see me so yeah my my superiors gave me approval and i talked to my parents and i told them my parents if you promise me not to send me to a mental hospital looney bean mental hospital institution psychiatric rehab whatever you call it nowadays if you promise me not to send me there then yeah i will come <laughs> they, they, they told me that they are not going to send me there, okay, because Korea is not like America, okay, they are They're not very creative individuals It's Americans That is so creative all the, Last episode we talked about all the American inventions internet computer cars helicopters airplanes rocket man in the moon on the moon and um telephone electricity light bulbs cameras everything you see it's american invention because americans are inventive creative they challenge conventional wisdom that's america okay so of course that open-mindedness creativity have good sides and bad sides the past century, it was all good, but uh, I mean, until 19, late 1990s, where Americans ran out of ideas, good ideas, and they started to 
be creative in the dark side. Okay, so from that point on, so America has been climbing up with all this creativity and innovation, but that same thing, the open-mindedness and creativity took the dark turn. Probably in the late 90s or something like that. And it's been going down ever since. So what's that dark creativity? Gay marriage, transgender bathroom, surgery, transgender surgery, and plastic surgeries, tattoos, piercings, legalization of marijuana, obesity, those are self-destructive things, and also dependency on government. You claim you are you have autism and you have PTSD and then you don't work. You just rely on the government money, which is other hardworking taxpayers' money. All those things, okay? So and all these things. It's not just liberal or leftist. No, 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 no. Trust me, man. Conservatives are as stupid as liberals. Left and right, there's no difference. Just look how what conservatives are nowadays. They worship Donald J. Trump as if he's God. As if Donald J. Trump is Jesus or Savior or God. They worship Trump blindly. That is stupid. That's Republicans, that's conservatives, okay? <laughs> they are no better than liberals, right? Yeah, liberals, yeah, they are good and best. Conservatives, they are good and best. They are the same, all right? Me, uh, my campaign slogan for presidency in 2020 is uh, unite the left and the right, reduce crime, reduce crimes to zero, and... Um, Average Americans representing average Americans, all right? So, yeah, let's t talk politics for a second, okay? So, for a minute, or for an hour, I don't know. So. Yeah, President Trump, is, I voted for him, I prayed for him, I almost cried when he got elected, so it was so beautifully done, and... I still like him and I read five of his books and um, I learned a lot from him and but he's a human being he has his flaws and make misjudgments like tariff war going on right now that's very stupid okay because that's not how you make a nation wealthy no a nation can be wealthy only when it produces goods and services that other countries want to buy. A nation can be strong economically only when it produces goods and services that is marketable. And Donald J. Trump is what, 70 some years old. So, like Americans say, uh, an old, old dog cannot learn a new trick. He ran out of ideas long time ago. Okay, so that's why he can, the only thing he can think of is, oh, just to show how tough he is, he is. to show how tough he is, by let's fight this countries economically like raise the tariff i'm strong i'm tough so I, so i'm going to show it to americans so that they can reelect me in 2020 that's the only card left that he has another thing he's trying to do is gimmicks gimmickery oh let's make this tax filing easy with one postcard another dumb stupid idea all right I file my tax online and it's not that hard. It takes me, what, 30 minutes. It's not a painful process. It's done online. I just click, click, click. 
that's it okay then i find my text it's not hard right now okay i would not use postcard because i don't want to miss something all right i claim my deduction you know home mortgage interest rate and whatever okay so i want to go through all those steps okay so i don't i would not trust that stupid postcard that donald j trump is suggesting proposing no i'm not gonna use it it's stupid right so that that he doesn't he ran out of ideas okay because he's old and he is spent that's donald j trump all right and um so and i watched this video with uh, his meeting with kim jong-un um how do you, he's not president, is he? He's prime minister. I don't know what he calls himself. Chairman Kim Jong Un. He's younger than me. He's North Korean. I'm South Korean, by the way. And what uh, he grew up, he's just like Donald J. Trump. He was born in a very rich and powerful family, and then he got this elite, elitist education in switzerland and i bet he can speak english and maybe some other languages and he was born with a silver spoon just like donald j trump was yeah so they are elit elitists elites okay donald j trump is not like you he says oh we i love uneducated blue color americans I believe he does, but he's not one of you. He does not represent you. He's not like you. He was born rich. He got free job training from his father as a real estate developer. He didn't have to pay for anything and he has been always the boss. That's why he never had to learn to respect other people. He's not like you. So you, if you think he, he is like you, you are being deceived by Donald J. Trump. You are being blindsided, blinded by his political slogan. He's nobody like you. He was born rich. He has ne never worked for anyone. He has always been the boss, employer. So he does not understand what us, we, average Americans go through every single day working for somebody having to kiss their asses suck it up donald j trump had never had to go through all that average american people's life why because he has already always been the boss he yell he fire he curse he didn't have to show any respect to anyone okay so that's donald j trump me, however, me on the other hand is just like you. I make average American salary fifty-seven thousand dollars a year, and I have never been the boss. And by average American, what I mean is, uh, on the outside we look average, but in the, on the, in the inside we are exceptional individuals with talents that have not been appreciated. That's me, that's you, that's everybody in America. Okay, we are smart, we have talents, but we are not being appreciated. Why? Because the country is being run by elites who went to Harvard, Yale, Stanford, West Point. They are running the country and I think that's wrong. Because if you are an elite like Donald J. Trump, who went to University of Pennsylvania, Wharton, MBA, business school, who are born rich, who have always been rich, they are the ones who's running the country. Donald J. Trump and his friends. They, so they don't know what the problems that we average americans are facing every single day they don't know and they don't care all right 
all they have is, oh, I went to Harvard, I went to Yale, I went to Wharton, I went to West Point, Stanford, Berkeley. So what they are saying is, I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. That's why you have to elect me. And you, average Americans, have been fooled and deceived by this rhetoric, elitist rhetoric. You voted for Donald J. Trump, who went to Wharton, Eugene was Pennsylvania. That's the, the best, well, I wouldn't say the best, but the most famous business school, MBA program, Master of Business Administration um, in the world. Okay, She's an elite, all right? Before that, who was it? Barack Obama, Harvard, Harvard Law School, Columbia University, political science major. Before that, George W. Bush. He went to Harvard Business School. Before that, Bill Clinton, Yale Law School. Before that, what? George Bush Sr.? Yeah, he's an elite too. He was a pilot in Air Force, I think. Before that, yeah, Ronald Reagan was not on not a traditional elite. He uh, he was an actor in Hollywood, and yeah, so he was good, right? And uh, he was down to earth and whatever, whatnot. So these elites, who are elites? I'm quasi elite. I'm not an elite. I'm never going to Harvard. Never been to Yale, never been to Stanford or West Point, no. I was in the army, but I was not even an officer. I was not even an NCO. I was never a sergeant, okay? I was. I went there as a junior enlisted soldier in U.S. Army as a specialist, E4, and I got out as an E4 specialist, okay? For four years. I was in the army for four years. This, uh, no, not this. I was honorably discharged okay and got my job here and went to law school in michigan university of michigan law school that's not an elitist school no it's a public school okay it's a state school it's i mean it's it's fairly high up in the ranks but it's not like yale or, or stanford or no no the university of michigan midwest american midwest my undergrad is in um University of Wisconsin, Madison, uh, study computer science. Again, it's not an elite. Yeah, it's, it's a great school, but it's not like MIT or anything like that, okay? And yeah, I did go to Cornell University, but I dropped out, all right? So <laughs> Cornell University is a, it's not a high top level Ivy League. That's Harvard, Yale, Princeton, okay? Cornell is lower Ivy League. It's a great school, but it's not, and also, it's not like up there, but uh, also I dropped out after two years, all right? So, I am quasi-elite, but not quite an elite, okay? So, so I understand both sides, high level, low side, low level. I have friends in both sides of the, this food pyramid, okay? So, What I observe, so I, I'm quasi elite, so I know I understand elites, what they do, how they live. It's it's this I tell you, because I used to be an elite, okay, kind of elite. So they work, they study all the time, so they become a robot, a machine. There is no humanity common sense and good conscience left. They burn it up. They sacrifice humanity, good conscience and um, common sense. They sacrifice those good traditional values in order to succeed and make a lot of money and become powerful. That's Donald J. Trump, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, George Bush Jr. Jr. and all that. Oh, top generals in the army or air force, navy, uh, admirals, oh, 
they are all that stuff okay they work 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 and so they have no common sense they don't have any good conscience they don't have any good humanity no they are working machines that's what they turn into because you work so hard you have to work so hard to get on top of that elitist hierarchy all right so that's what they become i have seen them all right they have no human souls they're working machines look at donald j trump he marry one woman and then he she gets old and so he dump her and then he go after a younger woman and then she gets old and so he dumps her and he gets a younger woman okay so there's no ethics there's no morality and he doesn't care the only thing he cares is a good sex okay with the young woman that's not just Donald J. Trump, that's any elites. Anyone who only cares about his own success, his money, his wealth, his power, they're always like that, all right? That's just how it is. And look at John McCain, okay? So he had a wife. He, His former wife has a car accident, so she's disabled so he dumps her he divorces her and then he gets a younger woman all right so he john mccain was an elite he was a pilot in air force i think yeah he's an elitist okay so pilots in the army in the air force yeah they're the top elite okay oh, in those circle they're all like that okay so you work 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 and you don't care about anything else except your own success your own power your own position to get up there and those people the mechanized machine like robot working machines robots they are the top dogs in washington dc and also in wall street in the real estate anywhere CEOs, congressmen, senators, they are just that, all right? That's why this country is down the ditch right now. Because they are not leaders, no. They just play the game of politics and money. To get that, to succeed in that, what do you have to do? You obey the majority. You do the homework, you obey. That's not leadership, that's leadership. You're not leading, you're being led. That's elites. To go to Harvard, you do what they tell you to do. You do the homeworks, you study, you do this play, whatever instrument, violin or flute, cello, and you go into student government and you do sports, <laughs> you are a robot. There's no room for creativity. No, they, they have no creativity. They are working machines, programmed machines. They do what other people tell you to do. That's elites, American elites, okay? So that's what they have been doing all their lives, decades. So they do the same thing when they get into politics. They obey the majority, even when the majority is wrong, like gay marriage, transgender bathroom, marijuana legalization, tattoos, piercings. They are majority American opinions, or feminism, plastic surgery, whatever, right? No matter what it is, all these elites, they obey the majority. Why? Because they want power. They want to be elected to presidency, senator, congressman, you name it. Judges, justices, same. Okay? They obey the majority. That's not leadership. That's leadership. And right now, Americans are lemmings. 
marching toward the cliff. Okay, that's America is heading right now. And at the very front of the lemming, this huge crowd of lemming is the elite, like Donald J. Trump or U.S. congressmen, U.S. senators. They are lemming leaders. They are leaders. They are being pushed by this crowd or mass of lemmings marching toward the cliff. Lemming leaders. Okay, that's America right now. Everywhere in America. Alright? Marijuana. Why is it so bad? Because it disables your short-term memory formation capability. If you are what, what, 70 years old, 60 years old, you already have job skill. If you are 40, 50 years old, you already have job skill. It's a long-term memory. So smoking marijuana will prevent you only from learning new things. But what you ha already have in the long-term memory, yeah, you retain those long-term memory, even if you smoke marijuana every day. So you will not lose your job because you still have job skill. But if you are young, if you are in your 20s, if you are in college or high school, and you smoke marijuana, you cannot learn a new job skill. Because your short-term memory formation capability is disabled by this marijuana. So you will not have a job skill, period. Okay, so. China, Korea, Japan, they don't smoke marijuana. If they smoke marijuana, they go to jail. In America, if you smoke marijuana, you are mainstream. You are hip, you are cool. Okay? In college, in high school, if you smoke marijuana, you are a popular guy. So, this encouraging culture of marijuana smoking right now in America. Marijuana in America is like God. Marijuana is the American God. Marijuanaism as the ideology. Marijuanaism is American God right now. Because people worship marijuana. Marijuana is omnipresent in America. Just like God. Marijuana is everywhere. You smoke it, you eat it, you drink it, you put it on your skin. Marijuana is omnipresent. It's being worshipped as American God. Marijuana is also omnipotent. It can do anything. It can heal anything. It can solve any problem in America. You put in your skin, you put in your food, and you, you smoke it, you drink it. It's omnipotent. It can solve any, any problem that you have because it makes you forget about everything. When everything is wrong, marijuana, you smoke it, then problem just goes away. It makes everything better, but that's an illusion. That's why I'm saying, that's what human knowledge is saying. Marijuanaism is an evil ideology. It's destruction. It's about destruction. You, it makes you complacent and make you feel everything is okay when nothing is. That's marijuana. Plus, it develop, it uh, lowers academic performance and work performance because you cannot form memory. If you cannot form short-term memory, you cannot form long-term memory. You can never learn a new thing if you smoke marijuana. Okay. That's the last thing America needs right now because China, Korea, Japan is going up and up because they come to America and learn new things and they go back and build their own country, okay? That's Asia, it's going up. China, um, academic performance number one, South Korea number two, America number 14. And they are going up, America is going down because Americans smoke marijuana, it's legal, it's legalized. America smokes more and more and more Americans smoke marijuana and the age is going down lower and lower and lower. Marijuana smoking is spreading and age of marijuana smoking level, age level is going down and down and down. Younger and younger and younger people are smoking marijuana. Okay? America is destroying itself. 
America's enemy is not North Korea, it's not China, it's America itself. America is on a self-destructive suicidal course right now. Donald J. Trump cannot stop it. Why? What did he say? Oh, marijuana is up to the states. That's what he says. Why? Because he's old and he's weak. He cannot fight the majority. The only thing Donald J. Trump is concerned right now is his re-election in 2020. That's because he's an elite. He says he's America first. No, it's Trump first in his mind. I am smarter and stronger and younger than Donald J. Trump. So if Donald J. Trump is about America first, then he will just give me, hand me over the presidency because I'm smarter. Of course, he doesn't know who I am, okay? <laughs> it's not his fault, just to be fair. But I do want to run against Donald J. Trump. I do not want Donald Trump just give it to me. Because I want to debate him. I think it would be fun and entertaining. I think I will enjoy it greatly to debate him you know, on a national TV. It, it's one of my fantasy. So yeah, I, I want to run against him. I want him to debate me. I debate him. It'll be fun. All right. That's what I want to have. What is that? So. Um, I, I love Donald J. Trump. Okay. He, I love him. He's funny and I have nothing against him, but I'm just stating the fact and why I should be the president and not him in 2020. One, 2021 January. Okay. So. Um, so yeah, average Americans representing average Americans. What I mean is that, uh, me, my friends, we are all average Americans. Okay. We live American life. We face American problems every single day. Elites, rich people, they don't, and they don't care about us. Okay. Why? Because they don't have to go through every single thing, every average American life that we go through every day. We have to be frugal, balance our personal budget. That's not easy, but rich people, elites, they don't even know such problem exists because they don't go through it. So they don't care because it doesn't bother them. All right. All they care is re-election, election, power, more money. That's all they care. That's elites. They don't care about us. So if you elect all those elites, then you are being fooled. All right. So, but average American like me, we know what the problems are. And I have all the solutions to those problems. Okay. So let's talk about American problems and American solutions, all right? Uh, I put it like this. Um, the number one problem, of course. Okay, would you give me one second? I gotta go to bathroom and then this camera in my laptop does not, does not have this uh, pose capability. So if I stop it, it will just it will end there, okay? I cannot just pause and restart. I cannot, this camera cannot do that, okay? So let me go to the restroom real quick, okay? I'll be right back. I may smoke a cigarette a little bit.
Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. I have to take a leak. Nature call. Okay, so. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate all the elites. I have many friends who went to Harvard, who went to Yale, who went to all these prestigious schools. Uh, yeah, so they are my friends and many of them are very nice people. Many of them are very caring people too. I have friends from West Point and Harvard, Yale, whatnot, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have friends there. They're nice. They're not evil, but they're workaholics. And what they, what does a workaholic does? What does, what do they do? Um, workaholics, they work, all they know is working. Okay, so when there's no work, they make work. They make these stupid projects that serve no purpose. So I'm a computer programmer and I'll talk a little bit about Microsoft Visual Studio. I use Visual Basic at work and Visual Studio used to be great. They used to have Visual Source Safe. There's a team environment uh, where you have backups and your version control and all that stuff. It was great, but uh, they came up with the stupid idea of Team Foundation. Okay, so. Visual Source Safe is very nice. It's a perfect tool. It was optimal. And then these elites, workaholics in, uh, where is Microsoft? Seattle, I think. They have nothing to do and they make all this money because once they invented this thing, Visual Source Safe, Visual Studio, money keeps flowing in. But so it's already perfect system. So, but they have no work to do because they <laughs> already built something that is perfectly fine. So these workaholics, what they do, they are being paid, but now they, they don't have any work, more work to do. So they feel it's unethical. It's against work ethics to just sit there. So they come up, they start to destroy the system that that he uh, already built. They make it worse by doing things that is unnecessary and that makes bigger and more inefficient. So take that's team foundation. Okay, so if you're a computer programmer, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's how it is in the government too. It's everywhere, every industry. You have uh, this perfect product, optimal product. So money is money keeps coming in and then they have nothing else to do. So what do they do? They start to destroy it. That's not their intention, but, but that's the end result. They keep adding things and make the system bigger and bigger and it becomes inefficient. And it starts to, the performance starts to degenerate because they are doing more, adding more stuff, unnecessary things, stupid things. Because they think it is right to work and work and work. They are workaholics. So they traded rationality with work. Because they feel comfortable when they work. If they, if they don't work, they feel guilty. <laughs> so they come up with these stupid projects that degrades their system. That's workaholics. All right. My recommendation to them is: let me grab a blanket. It's getting cold. It's summer, but it's Alaska, so it's not that warm in the summer. So yeah, my recommendation to these workaholics is: hey, hit the gym. Go to gym. If you don't have nothing to do because your system is working just fine, even if it is work hours, don't mess with your perfectly fine system. Hit the gym. Learn a new foreign language. Learn Russian. Learn French. What have you. Um, or hit the gym and get rid of your pot belly. Alright? That's my recommendation. 
don't mess with the system that is working just perfectly fine because you feel guilty about not working and making money. You make money, just enjoy it. You have time, enjoy it. Don't just keep working and working just because you feel guilty about making money without working. No, you're fine. Okay? Just use your time product you know productive manner learn a new foreign language learn martial arts learn how to dance sing and learn to run again all right because americans don't know how to run anymore okay they just walk to and from car and office and home they sit there in the home in office in the car all day every day yeah start running again so that's my recommendation, all right? So yeah, workaholism, that's one of the American problems. And another American problem is uh, the division between left and right. You Americans, I'm an American too, but <laughs> I think it's funny to say it. You Americans, you uh, talk about North and South Korea division, how sad it is. And I appreciate your concern you have nothing to do with Korea, but you care about Korea and especially North Koreans. That's admirable sympathy and compassion. I appreciate that, okay? But we don't have to talk about Korea when it comes to division. South Korea and North Korea is a physical division, but left America and right America, that's metaphysical division, all right? Let's draw the line again. Uh, humanology, okay? Seven hierarchy of humanology. Lower is physical, okay? Higher level is a metaphysics. Spiritual, material. Spiritualism, materialism, metaphysics and physics, all right? Mind and body. So, America is metaphysically divided, left and right. This is left America and right America. Democrats and Republicans, okay? It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a good thing. But we need to learn to love each other, love one another. All right, just like Jesus said, all right? So, it's very simple. Half of my friends are leftists, liberals, Democrats. Half of my friends. And half of my enemies are Republicans and conservatives because they're going to vote for Donald J. Trump no matter what. All right, that's my, they're, they're my enemies. They don't like me and they don't appreciate me and... I love them. Just like Jesus said, love your enemies, right? So, and half of my enemies are also liberals. You have to understand this. I have nobody. Even my enemies, I don't hate them, all right? Because I believe I can change them and become, make them become my friends. I've done this many times before in my life. I'm 40 years old. I've seen it all, all right? I love them because I, I, I believe I can change them so that they love me. I've done it before, many times, all right? I know how to do it. Come on, I'm a humanologist. I know everything about human beings, mind and body, okay? So it's just a long process. Some people, it takes longer, all right? But I know how to convert them to my side. That's why I'm a humanologist, okay? So, and you can be a humanologist too, all right? But you have to learn from me, all right? Because I know it all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told you it's a stand-up comedy, it's a one-man show, whatever. So, if I sound crazy, just laugh, all right? Don't take it seriously. And, um, so yeah, left and right, we divided, we hate each other, but 
I'm telling you, we don't have to hate. We just need to be tolerant, all right? Uh, and love. What I mean is be a good listener, even if you disagree. That's why half of my friends are Democrats, liberals, because they love me. Why? Because I listen to them. Here's one secret for you. Maybe it's not a secret, but how do you make somebody love you? It's this. You learn. You humble yourself, lower yourself, and you learn from that person. How? You listen when this person talks to you. Let him vent out. Let him express his disagreement. You, you listen. That takes patience. That's love. Love is not easy. There are many different kinds of love. This word love, we use it in so many different ways. I'm single, but if I had a girlfriend, I say, Oh, baby, I love you. You're a beautiful lady. I love you. What I mean in this context is this. You, a woman, you make me happy. So, I want to make you happy in return. If I make you happy, then that will make me happy. So, I love you means you make me happy, so I want to make you happy. Okay, that's what love means in this context. Love as a verb. I'm willing to buy you flower. I'm willing to wait for you. I want, I'm willing to buy you dinner, all right? So that's romantic love. Now, parental love is this. You have a baby. This baby is beautiful. It's like you have some eyes of you, whatever, right? And this baby is beautiful. So this baby makes you happy as a parent. In return, you want to do something for the baby because the baby makes you happy. So love is not free. It's conditional. Romantic love, she has to be sexually attractive. She has to be sexually satisfactory. That's what makes me biologically content, happy. Pleasure makes me feel good. During kiss, holding hands, hug, sex, she gives me pleasure. So, condition is conditioned on the pleasure. So it's not unconditional love. Parental love is conditional too. It is not unconditional. It is conditioned on that uh, this child is your child. It's not somebody else's child. This child has your genes. It's conditioned on that genetic linkage. Parental love is conditional. It's not unconditional. Then, so is evolutionary, biological, both romantic love and parental love. Alright, so it's not too saintly. It's more animalistic. Both parental love and romantic love. It's not something holy. It's something materialistic. Biological, evolutionary, materialistic, physical, all right? Then Jesus came, okay? So Jesus came, uh, give to people who, who cannot give you back. That's the purest love. Give to people who are the least, the lowest. 
who has nothing to do with you. This person, poor person, and you have no genetic linkage. Could be a different race. Right? And this person cannot give you back. It's not a beautiful child. No, he's an old man. He stinks. He has no money. He's ugly. He's fat, dirty, smelly. Okay, that's the kind of person that Jesus wants you to help, right? Now, if I just give him a dollar or ten dollars or hundred dollars, that's easy if you are rich. So, in humanology, love is defined as pain and suffering on behalf of someone else. Jesus says something similar. If you are rich and you donate $10, you don't suffer any pain. But if you are a widow and you give $1, that means more to Jesus because that means a lot of pain because this widow will have to starve, skip a meal because of this $1 donation. Humanology is based on Taoism, you know, Eastern philosophy, Taoism, like yin and yang, and also it is founded upon Christianity, okay, heavily. Humanology is heavily, heavily uh, dependent on the Judeo-Christian uh, Bible, both Old and New Testament, okay? It is also heavily relying on uh, Western European mathematics, biology, and physics. All right, so it's been, what, 53 minutes, and I took a bathroom slash cigarette break at least and I'm I'm kind of hungry right now and cold I turned the heater on but it takes a while but uh, let me turn the other heater on. I have many heaters in my house I'm sorry I, I had a long day so I'm not like 100% right now I booked a flight to Korea, which will happen in two weeks from now, and you know, as a full-time computer programmer, yeah, I, I had a long day. I came home, and so I'm not one hundred percent. So today is what what fifth fifth ep episode of this one man show, I guess, and um. <sighs> Yeah, I'm, I'm drinking vodka, but if you are pregnant, don't drink and don't smoke. All right? And uh, especially don't smoke marijuana. So if you are pregnant, do not smoke cigarettes. Do not smoke marijuana. Do not drink alcohol. Don't drink even coffee, okay? Because all those psychoactive agents like cigarette like nicotine alcohol marijuana what have you like caffeine anything that was psychoactive drugs sleeping pills whatever anything that affects your brain those are very small molecules okay so psychoactive agents anything affects your mood and your brain it can cross what's called BBB, blood-brain barrier. I learned this in psych introductory psychology class. So yeah, they have some goods, okay? So yeah, they can cross this blood-brain barrier and get into your brain. Okay, Not a every chemical can do that. But only small molecules can cross that barrier. 
And if they can cross this, and they can cross more easily the uh, the barrier between you, pregnant mother, and the baby. That's why anything that affects brain and mood, you should never take when you are pregnant. Because if you do, you give birth to a child that has brain damage, birth defect. Okay, you do not want that, and because many of them tend to become criminals. You do not want your baby to grow up to be a criminal or mentally disabled. That's what happens when you drink cigarette, um, alcohol, or smoke cigarettes, or smoke marijuana, or do any of those drugs when you are pregnant. You do not want that. Okay, so don't do it. But I'm a man, I don't get pregnant, okay? So I can drink all I want. <laughs> and I had a very long day. And um, I'm still working, doing, entertaining you intellectually and otherwise, all right? So, uh, all right, so let's introduce a new concept. It's not too new but it's a new concept and also so when there's a new concept we need to come up with a new word concept is like a, like water and word language terminology is like a cup so you you're putting containing this water to into a cup okay <clears throat> we're gonna call it copium all right it's came from Greek word I used to have uh, so human analogy was developed over two decades by me I mean my human analogy okay I don't care about other people's because uh, I don't know what, what they're talking about okay so copium I used to have a uh, Greek English dictionary when I was in Wisconsin 20 years ago when I was an undergrad student and I was in and out of school because my English was so poor and I had to take some took I had to take some semesters off the undergrad University of Wisconsin Medicine because I couldn't understand what they're saying in the lecture and I couldn't speak English either so I took some semesters off and I worked in a grocery a supermarket and then um, I had some free time so I studied philosophy books and mathematics on my own outside school when I was working as a beggar beg, begging boy bag boy and I would do parcel like you know carrying all these bags for the customer and you know loading to their cars and collecting shopping carts in the parking lot and begging you know I never made into a cashier because uh, they somehow they didn't like me very much, you know. You know, I'm kind of smart, but not very obedient. And so yeah, I was a begging boy for for a year, two years. I don't know. But uh, yeah, my, my I studied English with the songs of uh, the Beatles and the uh, Carpenters all these American or English songs, classics. I, re I would memorize their lyrics and that's how I learned English. So, uh, yeah, so at the same time, there, there was the time I, I, beginning to, I began to think about humanology and I made dictionaries and Copium, yeah, it probably it has to do with the word copy, copy machine. Also, there's a word called cornucopia. It's like horn of abundance. I think it came from the Greek mythology. You have this horn of some animal. This water comes out of it. So it's a, the symbol of uh, abundance, wealth, prosperity the horn of, uh, of abundance. So 
Copium, copium uh, in Greek word, I think it means something quantity, abundance. Okay, so yeah, so I just picked this word. Okay. Copium. What is copium? Is it is uh, anything with value and quantity, or anything with quantity, because anything conceivably has some value, either positive value or negative value. All right. So it's a scalar in physics and mathematics. In physics and mathematics, you have scalar and vector. Scalar is something with only with quantity. Vector is something with quantity and direction. And what I'm going to tell you next is a, a little bit new. Not too much new, but a little bit new theory. Scalar is a one-dimensional vector. Okay, because scalar can be either negative or positive like a real number or integer you have negative 10 plus 0 and positive 100 that's one dimensional vector in straight line you have elementary school you have one dimensional axis x axis you have zero, you have not minus one, you have plus one. Okay. That's scalar. It's also one dimensional vector. It has direction, negative or positive direction. Okay. So that's one dimension, first dimension. Okay. We are running out of space. So um, Let's borrow some real estate in this whiteboard. Like we mentioned before, human analogy heavily depends on mathematics and physics. That's developed in Europe by mostly white people and some Jews. But before that, there were Indians and Arabs. You know, algebra is Arabic word algebra okay al which means like the in Arabic I know some Arabic okay zebra G B R many Arab words have three consonants most of the Arab words have three consonants zebra I don't know what it means maybe it means number I don't know zebra I'm, I bet you it has same word origin as gibberish or garbage. Okay. Gibura. Garbi. I don't know. <laughs> gibberish. Okay. Whatever. So yeah, algebra, you know, comes from Arabic. Algebra. Okay. And uh, number zero came from the South East. South Asia, India, okay, where the Buddhism came from, and Hinduism, yeah, so. Yeah, but uh, the bulk of mathematics and physics, biology were developed by white people in Europe, okay, and also in America, right? Not much in Canada. I, I, there are smart people in Canada too. I love Canada, okay. And, um, so yeah, let's appreciate white people, okay? Um, human analogy is about truth, about facts. So you don't have to feel offended if you are not white, even if you are not white. I'm not white. It's okay to appreciate white people, all right? It's okay to admit what they have accomplished. Because it's the fact. You do not want to be a liar or denier. You do not want to be somebody who is so weak. You cannot handle the truth, the facts. You don't want to be that person, okay? So I want you to change. I'm a humanologist and also I'm a politician. My job is to lead you to the right way.
I am fighting against the majority. That's the difference between me and Donald J. Trump and all the rest of the elites in America. They tell you what you want to hear. I don't. I only tell you the truth, the facts. I don't even care if I don't become the president ever in my life. I don't even care if I die tomorrow. When I am alive, I will tell you the truth and I will correct you when you are wrong because I care for you. If you keep lying to yourself, you will get worse and worse. I speak against gay marriage, trans in the bathroom, marijuana, trans in the surgery, plastic surgery, tattoos, piercings. That the half of Americans or even 70% of Americans. I may hurt your feelings, but it's for your own benefit. I don't get high by offending you. You have to understand this. I love you. I'm endangering my own career and my own reputation by doing this. Because a lot of people will be offended and they will start to hate me. I'm doing this for you. I'm not doing this for myself. If I only care about myself and my future, my success, my career and my political ambition, I would do I will be doing things that Donald J. Trump do right now and all the other politicians do, are doing right now. I will tell you what you want to hear. But I don't. Why? Because I care about you. I don't care if I become successful. No. All I care is your success, not mine. I only care about your future, not mine. That's why I'm telling you the kind of things that you do not want to hear. I need to correct you because you are sick. America is sick. I talk about virtues of Korea, China, Japan. And you may tell me, ask me, then why don't you go to your own country where you came from? Because they are already... Or, I see myself as spiritual doctor, spirit doctor, or shaman, or ghostbuster, exorcist, okay? Because as in humanology, we separate concept and human. We have, there are good ideologies and bad ideologies, and humans either serve good ideology or bad ideologies, okay? America is possessed by bad ideologies, of tattooism, piercism, tattoo piercism, marijuanaism, gayism, transgenderism, plastic surgeryism. Okay, they're possessed. So, when you are possessed by these evil spirits, evil ideologies, or harmful isms, it paralyzes your rationality and it appeals to your emotion. It makes you angry and paralyzes your rationality and logic you become blind and you start fighting against anybody who oppose this ideology that is possessing you this, this wrong bad spirit become one with you so when I attack not you but the ideology that is possessing you, like sugar fatism, you get offended. Not I am not attacking you. I'm attacking the spirit. This pro sugar fatism. I'm attacking the spirit that is possessing you, but that spirit of sugar fatism is becoming has already become one with you so when this ism is offended 
you feel offended because not right now you and this demon is one body and spirit my job is separating is to separate you and this ism that is possessing you that's why I call myself a ghostbuster exorcist okay I'm doing this to rescue you from your abductor your kidnapper is this ideology of gay ism marijuana ism you are not you were not born with marijuana ism when you were born you did not know what marijuana is But you are exposed to this marijuanaism through friends, through media, whatnot. Okay. I'm trying to separate between you and this marijuanaism. All right. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. And I have to confess, I used to smoke cigarettes a lot but my doctor told me you should quit smoking and I told him I'm that's not gonna happen you say that because you are an American I'm Korean American and I know uh, cigarettes are not as bad as what American thinks so he stopped trying to persuade me then I came home and I realized he was partially right. So nowadays I smoke very little. This doctor exorcised me. Okay, he kicked the demon out of me. This uh, excessive, excessive tobaccoism. Okay, I used to be very indulgent about it, but now I'm not gonna quit smoking. The smoking is good as long as you are moderate when I smoke I take like four puffs nowadays and then I put it out and I put it back in my into my cigarette case I used to smoke like half a cigarette nowadays maybe one fifth or one eighth of cigarette okay because I realized that he was right it's a form of indulgence, self-indulgence. So nowadays I smoke very little, okay? So yeah, you exor exorcise me, I exorcise you. We teach each other, it's called education, okay? It's nothing new, really. It's education, okay? Correction, caring, okay? Do I impose my lifestyle on you? Yes, I do. And I invite you to impose your lifestyle on me when I'm wrong. Why? Because sometimes I know better than you do. Sometimes you do better, you know better than me. That's what education is all about. Okay? Education of mathematics. There's only one way to think about it. So mathematics teacher is forcing you to think this one way of mathematics. You have an equation like what? X plus 5 equals 12. There was only one answer. 7. Oh, it's diversity. It can be 8. It can be 2. It can be 3. It can be negative 1. It's freedom. It's liberty. Not in mathematics. Not in anything. Oh, it's my freedom to be gay, lesbian, bisexual, homosexual, transgender. No. In humanology, there's only one answer. Heterosexuality. Why? Because that's biology. Sexuality, the origin of sexuality is reproduction. There are species who can reproduce asexually. 
or even something like homosexually or bisexually. Yeah, there are those organisms. But humans are not one of them. It's a heterosexual reproduction. That's the only mode of reproduction. So, if you are gay, if you're living a gay lifestyle, you can never be happy. Why? Because this evolution of heterosexuality in Homo sapiens, human species, has been developed over millennia, millennia, thousands and billions of years. You cannot change that evolutionary product that has been built for hundreds of thousands and billions of years one day. You cannot change those things in one day, right? Or 10 years or 100 years. There's no way. You cannot win that fight. Billions of years versus 10 years. You lose. Okay? So because... We'll talk about copium later, okay? It's about quantity, something valuable like money, time. But yeah, we'll talk about it later. There are many things in humanology, okay? So we just go with the flow. Because I want to save you. I want to change you. I'm not shy about this. I do want to change you. And I want you to change me too, right? So, but you are not here. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking to myself, talking to this camera, okay? So, but when I meet you, yeah, I'm all ears, right? So, and I, I hope you are not being bored. I hope you are being entertained. So, homosexuality, okay? So, uh, you are rebelling against your na own nature, all right? Oh, I was born gay. I don't believe you. You are being fooled by gayism. I don't blame you because you are a victim of this gayism. And I, I, I'll try to help you out in this, okay? Because I love you. I care about you. All I'm doing this, the reason I'm doing this, it, I don't get any benefit, okay? I get harm. My reputa I'm putting my reputation in risk for you. I don't gain from this. I want you to understand this. I have everything to lose by saying all this. Why? Because nowadays, gayism is American God, just like marijuana-ism, tattoo pierce -ism. Everybody worship gayism, marijuana-ism. It's American God. All right? I'm a rebel. I'm a super minority. All right? Nobody in America would say anything against gayism or marijuana-ism. Because that's the majority and Americans are weak. They will not say anything against gayism or marijuana-ism or tattoo pierce-ism because they are afraid, just like people used to be afraid of Hitler. There's no free speech in America anymore, just like Germany under Hitler. If you speak against gayism or gay marriage or transgender bathroom or if you speak against marijuana, you are ostracized. You can lose your job. You can ruin your life. You can lose your friends. Why? Because it's blasphemy. It's sacrilege. Just like back in the uh, Middle East, I mean, Middle Age, the Dark Age, in Europe, if you speak against the Christian God, you get executed, excommunicated, excluded. Americans criticize about that. Americans criticize Germans under Hitler. 
Guess what? That's America right now. If you speak against marijuana or gay marriage, you get excluded, you get ex excommunicated, you can lose your job, you can lose your friends. Me, I don't care. Why? Because it's a funny story, okay? Give me one second. Let's take one minute break. I'm gonna smoke cigarettes and I come back because it's getting a little bit intense. Give me one minute cigarette break. I'll be right back. After work hours, so that's my excuse. I'm drinking at home and all alone in Alaska, and nobody's watching this, and so whatever, right? So let me tell you about a little bit of my my life. Um, the first decade of my life was ordinary. Uh, I had many friends and all, but. Once I become 11 and on, and uh, it's been tough. I have always been the powerless minority. So I understand what gay people two decades ago, three decades ago, went through. Powerless minority. They used to be that. Now they are powerful minority. Elites. Just like elites. Just like people who went to Harvard, Yale, Stanford, West Point, or not. They are minority, elites are minority, but they are powerful minority. That's gays. Okay, so. 
10 years ago. I sympathize. 20 years ago, I sympathize with gay people because they are powerless minority, just like I, I am right now. Okay, I am making all this videotape and put upload in YouTube. I love YouTube. I love Google. I love Bing in Seattle, Microsoft. I love them. My Amazon in Seattle. Yeah, they're great companies. They make great products. I love them. All right. So, I am still powerless minority. I'm nobody. I'm just a computer programmer in Alaska, running for president in 2020. Okay, so powerless minority. That's been constant theme in my life for three decades. Three fourths of my life, I've been living just that. I'm still living it. Making this video, nobody's watching it. Maybe somebody will watch this after I die. It could be tomorrow. It could be 50 years from now. I don't know. That's why I'm making this to leave something behind me. Right? So. Why is being gay so wrong? It's this. Okay. So. Gay people say, because I talk to them. Okay. I listen to them to understand them and I learned a lot why they are gay okay so they say oh I've been gay for as long as I can remember like I was five years old really that's why I'm telling you this gayism ideology is paralyzing this rationality reason okay if you are five years old and you say you are homosexual when you're five years old. That's wrong. Can't you see? I'm appealing to your reason, your rationality. That small rationality is lurking, hiding, and being suppressed and oppressed. But it's in you, somewhere, deep in your mind, deep in your brain. I'm trying to revive that, all right? and resurrect it just like Jesus did okay I'm his follower so I do what he does what he did 10, 2000 years ago okay he's my hero my savior right and your savior too so if you're five years old you're not even sexual how can you be homosexual? Okay. Yeah, when I was five years old, yeah, I love my friends and male and female. Of course, but that's not sexual love. That's friendship. You don't know what sex is. When I was 11, maybe 12, in my seventh grade, there was this male teacher. It was all male schools because I was in middle school. In Korea, middle school, high school is just like in the army. We shave our hair, we shave it, we have uniform, it's all male or all female. America used to be like that and America still have those schools. Separation of gender, okay, so we would go to form of formation, standard of formation, and we would march. It was just like the army, middle school and high school in Seoul, Korea, in 1980s and 1990s. Right now, I don't know what's going on in Korea, okay? It was like that, and we were beaten. All the teachers, they are most 99% male teachers. They carry this staff, wooden, wooden stick, one inch thick, and one or 1.5 feet long, like this. And when we do wrong, we get disciplined physically. You would get punished with hand, calf, thigh, butt. We were disciplined when we did something wrong. And that's good. That's something America used to do. 
Korea is like half a century behind America. So Korea now is like five, 50 years ago in America. Okay, it's family oriented, disciplined, hardworking. Okay, so when I talk about virtues of Korea right now, it's like virtues of America 50 years ago. It's not uniquely Korean, no. It's American too. America 50 years ago. Where there were no marijuana, no piercing, no tattoos, no gay marriage, no 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 the horrible things that's happening today, right? So and obesity is not an American thing. One hundred years ago, America's Americans used to be thin and fit and healthy. Obesity is not an American tradition. No, it's American contemporary vice. Americans used to be fit. Obesity came later in America. It's not an American thing. It's not American virtue, American tradition, American value. No. Right? So, back to homosexuality. Okay, so, yeah, gay people, they will say, I've been homosexual as long as I can remember. No, because when I was at 12, I was seventh grade and this male teacher came to teach us Korean literature and he introduced this brand new word to us. It could cox on me. I'm writing in Korea. Cock. This is like G, this is like A, this is G, G A G, cock, son, this is like S, this is like a U, this is like N, S U N, son, and this is M in Korean, and this is like E, me, cock, son, me, it means Kag means leg, son means line, me means beauty. Leg, line, beauty. The beauty of the line of the leg. Beauty of line of a leg. I had no idea what he's talking about. I was 12. Some of the mature guys, like tall, dark, handsome guys knew what this Korean literature teacher meant by this. I had no idea why is a leg of a woman so beautiful, <laughs> just a leg. And when I was seven years old, I don't know why men and women kiss. It was like disgusting. Why, why do they put mouth to mouth? It was disgusting. E, like I, I don't want to see that stuff when I was seven. When I was 12, I don't know why male feel beauty in a woman's leg. I had no idea what that meant. Why? Because I was pre-pubescent. Sex, I did not understand why adults do it. It's dirty, it's disgusting. Why, 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 why do you do that? I didn't understand. Why? Because I was pre-pubescent. I was sexually underdeveloped because I was just 12. But later on, when I became 15, I started to understand. I started to perceive sexual beauty in women's legs. I started to understand what this meant, the women's legs beauty. The leg contour line of a slender woman. Why is it so beautiful? Okay, so sexuality came after I turned 14, 15. Before that, I was asexual. That's how everybody is. You are an asexual human being before you reach your pubescence in your early teenage or mid teenagehood. So, homosexuality, they, they say, no, 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 no. I was homosexual. I was sexual when I was five. That is a lie. 
by this gayism concept, it paralyzes human rationality. It takes over. It's like you riding on a horse. Horse obeys what you do. When you ride a horse, you take over the brain and control of this horse. If you steer it to the right, the horse goes to the right. If you steer the horse to the left, it goes to the left. You are taken over by this concept, ideology of gayism that is above you. All right? I want you to realize that. No matter who you are, either you serve a good concept or bad concept. Right now, I'm serving humanologyism because I believe that's a good concept, good ideology. You don't have a choice. Either you pick, you get to serve a good ideology or a bad ideology. You cannot get out of it. You want to die, you are serving suicide-ism. You want to live, you are serving survival-ism. Suicidalism or survivalism. You cannot get beyond concept level. One way or the other, you get to serve some ideologies. If you have to serve something, I recommend you to serve good ideologies, not bad ideologies. Serve the truth, not lies. Okay? So, 70% of AIDS patients are male gays. Why? Because we males, whether gay or not, gay or straight, we are promiscuous. It's evolution, it's biology, because it's, all, it's not just us humans, it's any animals. We want to spread sperms. We want to have sex with as many young, healthy women as possible. That's our biological impulse. Gays retain that promiscuous, promiscuous penchant, predilection, dictated by our evolution biology. So when males become gay, they do binge gay sex, promiscuous gay sex. Why? Because they want to have sex with as many partners as possible. That's why there is no stopping them. Gay marriage is not monogamous. They start their gay marriage by agreement. Mutual promiscuity agreement. I'm going to have sex with as other men. I'm going to have sex with other men, too. They agree. Why? Because they understand each other, their needs. They have no problem with that. But, you know, heterosexual world is a to it's the opposite. Females do not tolerate promiscuity of males. There is this natural, inherent, built-in deterrence mechanism in heterosexuality against promiscuity. Women hate it when men sleep with other women. It's jealousy. Women do not tolerate that. That's what, that's what stops husbands from being promiscuous. 
because these husbands do not want to lose their wives. So the women stop men from being promiscuous. That is why male gays are only 2% of American population, but 70% of AIDS patients are male gays. Rationally and reasonably, that should be good enough for you to oppose gay marriage. But probably you are not convinced. Why? Because you are still possessed by pro-gayism. Your rationality, your reason is paralyzed. So probably what I'm telling you right now doesn't have any effect on you. Because I'm just one person. A poor computer programmer in Alaska. But this ideology of pro-gayism and gayism is not just Democrats. Right now, it's the majority of Republicans, too. Pro-gayism, this ideology, has been so powerful and so widespread, it's not just liberals anymore. It's Donald Trump, too. He went to the wedding of Elton John. He used to be... Elton John used to be straight when he made a lot of great music. Some of them I like. I still do, and but Elton John, his career sank, and then he became gay to attract attention. Maybe no women wanted him, wanted him, and so he was lonely. So he wanted some company. So no women wanted him. So he went with another lonely loser, male. That's gayism, lesbianism, same. Maybe this one woman was sexually harassed and assaulted as a young girl. So she hates men or she fears men. She's lonely or and so she meets another lonely woman who has never been sexually assaulted or raped or harassed, but she is obese. She's unattractive, so she's lonely because no male wants her. So these two women, an attractive woman, but who has been sexually molested as a child, so she hates or fears men. There's another woman who have never been sexually molested or raped or assaulted, harassed, but she is unattractive, so no man wants her. So this attractive woman who hates men, although every man wants her, and this woman who is obese, who is not attractive, she's never been sexually molested, but no man wants her. These two women come together. Why? Because they are lonely. Okay? They want company. So they come together these damaged individuals. That's defeatism. That's why gayism is so harmful. It prevents an individual from overcoming the obstacle, improving himself or herself. So there's this male he has been rejected by women. He is afraid of rejection. It hurts. I know because I've been rejected by women by many other things. Okay. I've been always rejected. That's why I just, I'm just, I'm 40 years old. I'm making $57,000 a year, just average level. Okay, but I tried many times to get ahead, make great in my life, but I've been always rejected and I'm single. I've never been married, I have no kids. I've been rejected a lot, most of the times. 
It hurts, I know. So, but I have been disciplined to handle that pain. So in human analogy, the two elemental emotion is pain and pleasure. Okay, it's all variation of pain and pleasure. That's all different emotion, like disappointment or whatever. Yeah, they're all pain or pleasure. Okay, so yeah, but I have been disciplined as children, as a child, as a teenager, by my parents, by my teachers. I love my teachers. I love my parents. I've been disciplined. So I, I'm a very strong person. I can handle pain. So not everybody has been blessed like I have been. They grew up weak. Nobody disciplined them. So there are men who are, have not been disciplined as a child, as a teenager. So this man cannot handle the rejection, the pain of rejection from women. And I had some ex-girlfriends. I'm single now, but I had girlfriends in the past. It did not last long, but I do have his story. Okay, so. Even now, to get one date with a woman, it's a long, painful process. Why? Because I'm not rich, I'm not famous, I'm not powerful. If you are rich, powerful, famous, then yeah, you can get a girl, even if you are married with kids. Because that's what turn on women, what sexually arouse women. I don't have any of that, right? So for me to get a girl, a date, when I pay for the food and drink, it's a very painful process, long process, a lot of work, and pain of waiting, and pain of rejections. To get one date, I get rejected by three scores of women. If I get rejected by th 30 women, then I may get one date. Not a girlfriend, not a wife, one date that I pay for. It, that's how difficult it is. All right? So yeah, I think in my previous episode, uh, I think I explained why us Americans right now in contemporary days not just Americans, all the Westerners in Europe, Canada, Brazil, Australia, Westernized world. We are weak because we are like heirs of hardworking and rich parents. We inherited all these technological advances. So our life has become so easy because we have car, we have internet, we have cell phone. Life has become so easy, so that ease of life spoiled us. Our life is so easy, we cannot handle the pain. That's why we are weak. We never have to lift this heavy weight. We have machines to do all the weight lifting for us. That's why we are weak. So that's why homosexuality has become such a big problem in this contemporary time. Because men are too weak to handle the labor of courtship. They cannot handle the rejection. They cannot handle the labor that it takes to get one date. So they cannot get women. But they are lonely. They need somebody. So these two, sorry, all this sputtering. So these two lonely, lazy, weak men, they are lonely. They need somebody. So they come together. 
That's gayism. Alright? Or two women who are just afraid. Who are, who are just unattractive. No men want them. Who are afraid of men. They come together. They become lesbians. Alright? That's gayism. It's the symptom of American weakness. The root cause is that um, we inherited all this technological advance, so our life has become easy, so we are weak. Yeah, so we cannot handle the pain, so we become obese, we become gay, we, become, we smoke marijuana, and uh, we want to look tough, so you do tattoo and pierce, piercing to compensate for our weakness, inner weakness, we, what we want to look strong and another, another problem in america is america worship crimes they want to look like criminals that's why they do tattoos and piercings which used to be only the realm of criminals okay so america has all these problems okay and We have to solve these problems. What else should we be doing? Right? Should we just wait until Jesus comes from the cloud and there will be 666 and there will be Antichrist and this world, Doomsday Prophet, God sent what meteors from the sky, these burning mountains and kill everybody and we good people what? We just go to heaven and Jesus become our king and no I, I disagree with that I'm a Christian but I do not believe in everything that church Christianity churches teach teach us no I believe that we have to be the Jesus we have to be the Savior we have to be the salvation I have I believe Every single one of us have to be the second coming of Jesus. Every single one of us has to be the advent of Jesus. That's what I believe in. That's humanological Christianity. Because otherwise it's just too lazy. We just wait. We just sit there until and Jesus comes and solve all our problems. That's just too lazy, and I think that's unchristian, to be honest, because uh, that's just lazy. That's too easy, and and what what else do we have to do? I mean, unless we fight evil ideologies and clean our world, make the future of our children and grandchildren better, I think it's our job. I don't think it's Jesus's job. I think Jesus did his job. It's in the Bible. He taught us what we should do. So, if you have never read Bible, go to a dollar store and buy buy Bible for one dollar. Okay, or just go to internet and read what Jesus said. All right, and um. He does not want us to just sit there and wait for him, no. My understanding, my memory tells me that Jesus wants us to fight the evil ideologies and kick out demons and make people better. He wants us, Jesus wants us to work, not just sit there and wait until he comes and solve every single problem of ours no he already solved our problems in Bible it's there we need to read learn what Jesus told us to do and save the world ourselves okay all right it's been almost two hours good night bye